from the previous example we had this simple data set and then we're able to put it in a nice table like this okay and so what you need to know is that this simple table you see over here is what we call the frequency distribution table okay the table in which you have allocated the individual frequencies to their corresponding numbers is what we call the frequency distribution table okay the frequency distribution can be grouped or what ungrouped and that's what we are coming to look at now when we talk about grouped frequency distribution okay we talk about grouped frequency distribution over here the max or observations are grouped into what class intervals okay so the max or observations are grouped into class intervals as shown below just like this so as you can see over here we have max but remember this can be any other observation right it can be anything other than max for example it can be ages okay or it can be scores or heights okay but for the purpose of this studies we're going to use max okay so the max are grouped into what class intervals and i'm going to explain this pretty shortly and these are the class intervals we are talking about zero to nine okay zero to nine ten to nineteen twenty to twenty nine thirty to thirty nine and what forty to forty nine so in this frequency distribution table in fact how many different class intervals do we have we have one two three four and five so we have five different class intervals in this frequency distribution okay and let me explain this pretty shortly what the class interval means let's pick the first one for example zero to nine what we are saying over here is that between the intervals zero to nine the frequency is what 14 okay and then between the intervals 10 to 19 the frequency is what 2 or well, the, the, the frequency 14 you see over here right the 14 you see over here consists of max from 0 to what 9 so it could be max like 5 7 6 8 could be 0 could be 9 okay it could be four could be three but how many but how many of them 14 of them is that right now when you come up here to you we have 10 towards 19 it means the max scored by let's say students or whatever from 10 to 19 are only two so it could be um, let's say 15 and 16 so they only two scores or it could be 15 twice right it could be 18 and then let's say 11 okay yes it could be 10 and 19 is that right good so that one is also um, two that is the good frequency distribution we are talking about all right let's talk about the other one on grouped frequency distribution on grouped frequency distribution now over here the max or the observations are not grouped into class intervals okay they are not grouped into class intervals as shown below so we have the max as you can see over here there's nothing like grouping there's nothing like intervals over here they are distinct numbers okay so the mark 5 has the frequency what 17 what it means is that 17 students scored what 5 okay the mark 6 has a frequency 21 what it means is that 21 students scored what 6 and then 10 students scored the mark what 7 and then 9 students scored the mark what 8 right so under the ungrouped frequency distribution the max or the observations are not grouped as you can see over here but when you come to the grouped frequency distribution the max or observations are grouped into what class intervals let's talk a little bit about the class intervals let's pick um, the first class interval over here and then talk about that 
you pick the first class interval you can see some two numbers 0 and 9 okay what we are saying is that all the marks from 0 to 9 should be recorded against this class interval when you come here to all the marks from 10 to 19 should be recorded against that class interval okay but when you look at the class interval it gives us some limits these two numbers you see over here are giving us some limit beyond which we can't go okay what it means is that if the person scores more than nine the person wouldn't fall in this interval okay the person wouldn't be recorded or counted here right good so it means this numbers you see over here they give us some limit and then when you come here to if the person scores um let's say more than or greater than 19 the person wouldn't be recorded in this category if the person scores less than 10 the person wouldn't be recorded in this category so the numbers you see over here they give us or provide us with some limits therefore these two numbers you see over here are all we call the class limits okay the two numbers you see over here they are all we call the class limits so that's the limit in this class interval these are the class limits okay in this class interval these are the class limits when you come to this class interval to these are the class limits but the limits are two you have one to the left and one to the right all in fact each of them has names the first one to the left is what we call the lower class limit okay the lower class limit and then the one to the right is what we call the upper class limit okay the bigger one over here is the upper class limit and then the smaller one over here is the lower class limit all right good let me pick another class interval like this one 30 to 39 in this class interval these are the class limits 30 and then 39 are the class limits okay and the 30 be the good i guess it's right 30 will be the lower class limit lcl and then 39 will be the upper class limit ucl good so that is about the class intervals there are some other things like class size and then class boundaries we'll look at them in the other videos right you can leave your comments and questions in the comment section but in the next video we'll be looking at how to construct frequency distribution tables from a given set of data if you've not subscribed to my channel please subscribe and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you get notified anytime new videos are posted and please don't forget to like and share stay tuned